All right, so everyone that's tuning in, uh, we'd like to welcome the great David Nakayama here on the MetaHumans Comics, MetaHumans Mondays uh, YouTube channel. Um, thank you so much for joining us, David, first and foremost. Uh, really appreciate having you here. Happy to be here. Yeah. Awesome. And uh, of course, for those of you uh, that already uh, follow MetaHumans and know, uh, we did uh, a nonstop Spider Man. Uh, number one comic book exclusive with Marvel and uh, David did our cover and boy did he knock it out of the park uh, absolutely uh, gorgeous um, man gorgeous cover uh, MJ Black Cat it's a, a very very uh, awesome homage to uh, the old Archie uh, milkshake covers absolutely love it um, yeah when you sent this uh, uh, over and we're going back and forth I already knew it was going to be a hit and I already knew how amazing it was going to come out, so uh, thank you for that. It came out amazing. You did a wonderful uh, piece for us, and uh, but not just ours. You continued to knock it out with uh, so many other covers, you know? A quick little, you know, how you got into, uh, you know, comics, like, essentially. I know I know we can, excuse this could be a whole two-hour, three-hour show on that, but maybe if you just want to, like, the, the brief summarization uh, for the most part, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, nice. When I see your work, though, David, I can tell it's your work. And I think that's a very important part about uh, being an artist and having a lasting career is being able to tell uh, someone's work. And you do have it. There is a distinct thing to to your art. You know what I mean? From some of the shapes to the colors to even uh, uh, that very cool uh, DNA signature you have. You know what I mean? Like everything. <laughs> So then, if you could draw any style, what what should your style be? 
so I had this uh, this multi-year period where I was sort of figuring it out. If you guys go and look at my old comics, you'll see it right there. You know, there's like there is very cartoony, it's very realistic, and only in the last you know in the last few years I feel like the synthesis is really happening, and I know what I'm doing and what what I am supposed to look like. <laughs> what was your first uh, published comic work? I, I had a short story, like a six pager, in an issue of Star Wars Tales back when Dark Horse was publishing it. Fantastic. No, so it's not even the cover. It's just a it's six pages, an interior story about a you know a, a Sith apprentice who backstabs his Sith Lord. Nice. The new Sith Lord. Uh huh. It's, it's a good story. Enjoy That's it. cool. Uh, what what issue was that? What issue was that? Uh, my oh. parents framed it for me when I <laughs> started so around. Yeah, yeah, because now I'm gonna now I'm gonna go deep dive to hunt for that. Yeah. Right. That's that's rad. It's parents framed it for him. We just had a uh seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, I'm gonna note that. I'm gonna note that. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. That is really cool. Well, that's a heck of a thing to start on, though, is Star Wars, you know what I mean? That's a heck of a thing to start on. I, I got the call for the email uh, from a Dark Horse editor when I was in school, at the Cubert School, and, like, I'm busy, really busy with work, and, yeah, here is this thing that I've been trying to get the whole time, so I busted my butt, you know, to draw these six pages, and, and they had to be good, right? Like, yeah. these opportunities don't come around, was, this is a really big deal to me, so it was... You know, just killing myself to make these pages the best I possibly could. And on top of it, you had to design everything, right? Like, it was a new Sith Lord. It was a new apprentice who hadn't existed before. Uh, they had a ship that was unique to them. There was a whole world, you know, like a like a Coruscant kind of world. Yeah. Um, so it was like it was too much. Um, but, I, you know, it's all right. I pulled it off. Well, you know, all of those things are becoming more relevant now in the Star Wars universe. All that EU stuff... Francisco and I had a discussion about that other day that they're just pulling these things now into the world, you know? So yeah. they're becoming canon in some ways. Yeah. Some, some of the better ideas, you know, have made it back. Um, there's no way they're going to borrow my stuff from, <laughs> from Star Wars till 17. Uh, but it was still cool to play with it. And uh, uh, I have been working on uh, a new Star Wars thing recently. So that'll, that'll be fun to share. So nice. You know. Nice. Very, very cool. So I, I know you knew, uh, mentioned the uh, the Kubert School. I've actually, I've been, I'm aware of that school. And sometimes I've often thought, because I've written a lot and uh, about doing like comic book writing and stuff like that. I know like, I think like Amy Chu is an instructor there right now. I think she's right, like actually an instructor right now. She's actually still teaching there. But a lot of people have gotten a lot of work from there, right? Uh, I, depends what you mean. Do you mean like, a lot of good instructors are getting work or do you mean the students? No, like the students, like spinning off of there to get gigs in different places and stuff. Yeah. I've always been curious yeah. about that. There's a long list of really popular comic creators who have gone through okay. the system. Uh -huh. um, sometimes you'll see ads in comic books from them. And, you know, obviously the Cuber Brothers themselves and, you know, many, many others. Um, I'm always really delighted to see it if they bother to put my name on there. I don't they they need to put your name on there. Your name needs to be on there. Not what, not what petition for it. I feel like if they put my name on there, my, then I have arrived, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, some really high name um, talent to be uh, instructors there. Uh, so, yeah, as far as I know, they're doing great. And uh, it was a good time for me, for sure. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to sprinkle in some questions here uh, throughout the interview. So we'll do the first one. So this is from one of our, uh, uh, this one was through Instagram. And uh, it's from Perpetual Midnight Cosplay. And they ask, what was it like to work on the X-Men animated series DVD cover art? Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, th that was such an interesting uh, and unexpected project that ended up being everything to me. Uh, you got to understand, when I got that project, I think I was doing, you know, I was at the very beginning of working with Marvel, on like some Marvel Adventures books, I uh -huh. had nothing, nothing major to my name, I had done some some Top Cow stuff, I had definitely worked on the City of Heroes comic book for a long time, um, but not very much with Marvel, and out of the blue I get this email to draw this stuff, and look 
Yes, yes. So that is... And that is fantastic, David. I absolutely love what you did. Not just with um, Rogue, Gambit, um, you did uh, Firestar, right? Most recently, there was a line of Age of Apocalypse figures. Yes, Age of, okay, yeah, Age of Apocalypse, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You drew a uh, uh, you drew a uh, Jeff the Shark, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is awesome. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that was fantastic. Yeah, that's actually. Uh, well, I don't know if in the comics right now in canon, but that was like Deadpool's girlfriend, uh, Shikta, for a while, something like that. Yeah. Um, Yeah, those those are incredible. Um, man, yeah, I'm looking more at the uh, we just we just we put the uh, the image of Rogue, the Hasbro figure that you did uh, on the screen right now. Man, it, it, your art lends so well to, to the figures like this. Um, I really hope they uh, they book you to do uh, some of the. You would do incredible on the Star Wars stuff too. Holy smokes! Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I sure hope so. Yeah. So those are different teams. Like, uh -huh. uh, uh, you know, I'd be really, really honored to work on Transformers, Ooh. G.I. Joe, yeah, Star Wars, any of that stuff. The G.I. Joe. I love, I love all the stuff I grew up with. It. It's all like in my heart, and I, I'd love to. Yeah. Once we did recently a Transformers uh, X Men crossover figure, that was pretty cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the Blackbird Jet. That's the one. Yes, yes. That was amazing. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna hop skip over to uh covers in general, back to, to comic book covers here. I, I have an image displayed here. I'm showing uh the Scarlet Witch Infinity cover, which this is this is cool because like you were doing this stuff before the show came out, you know what I mean? So like, the, yeah, you were doing this stuff before the show came out. And so now the show popped off, right? So a lot of people had to backtrack and then started looking for your, your Scarlet Witch covers. But that Infinity cover where she's holding the cards, I absolutely love that cover. Um, nice. What was the, uh, the kind of like give us an a insight on the, the process. Like how do, you, how do you conceptualize some of these ideas? How quick do they come to you? And like how... You know, how, like, is it one of those things where when it pops in your head, you're like, boom, 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 get right to it? Or like, you kind of put on the side and you know what you, you know, like, how, how do you, how do you work around it? How do you work with it? Yeah, it's such a weird and magical process about how that happens. Um, you know, to, to back up for a second, so the project I was given was like, do a cover for Tarot, which yeah. is the Avengers vs. Defenders, right? Uh -huh. So anything was uh, available. Could have been any mix of Avengers and Defenders, anything I wanted. So I go, how about just the Scarlet Witch? I like Scarlet Witch. I can do something cool with her. And they're like, cool, try it. And so after I had narrowed it down to just this one character that I had wanted to draw for a long time, just because I like her, I like her look. I, you know, I had some 
some urge to draw her character. Uh, I sat down and thought about it. What can I do that's magical and weird and sexy at the same time? And, you know, one time I was on this um, this panel with Jay Scott Campbell talking about comic art. It was another one of those instances where I'm like, what am I doing here? You know, like, that's yeah. the best right there. Why are you talking to anyone but him? But, um, that's awesome. There, there it was. We were trying to explain, you know, what does it take to make a good cover? And the point I was trying to make is that it can't just be the good drawing, right? Like, there are lots, every cover, you know, if, you, if you're good enough to make it into the comic book industry, you draw pretty cool. You know, the draftsmanship is probably there. So, what is it going to take to make this cover more interesting than that? And to me, what makes a cover stand out from the crowd? Uh, assuming the draftsmanship is very good. And I try to make the draftsmanship as good as I can, obviously, but, uh, you know, it's is there a story that you built in? Is there uh, some kind of visual gimmick? Is there a pop culture reference? Is there humor? Is there sex appeal? Is there all of that, you know, all in one cover? And so when I'm thinking about Scarlet Witch and magic and stuff, I'm like, well, what visual gag can I put in here? And that's when I, I thought of you know, the, the recursive infinity idea. Yeah. And it was the first time I'd ever done something like that, but it, uh, it made sense for her. And, yeah, you know, the, the it does. Tarot and it, it put the idea of cards in my head. I, get that. I guess that's how I got there. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can already imagine, like, in the future, like, a, a, a homage to this with, like, Gambit and, like, an infinity card cover. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I have. I've not been asked to homage my own stuff, nor have I seen too many homages of my own stuff from another artist. But wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. Hey, it's going to happen. That is inevitable. It's inevitable. That's going to happen. Watch, David. You're going to see. Um. I think we'll see a milkshake homage. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I got uh, another another uh, uh, question here from Action Doll. Uh, is there uh, much of a difference between working on comic books, working on merchandise design, and or video games? Like, what are the big differences? Yeah, it's every project is really different. You know, like the company you're working for, and specifically like the the manager or editor you're working for, can make a huge difference. Um, if, it, if there's an IP involved, that can make a huge, huge difference. So, amazingly, uh, I always tell people, like, which you think, like, you know, the bigger the company, the more you would think they, they worry about you, you know, getting the IP right, getting your business, and give you all the notes and stuff. And it has not been my experience that Marvel does that. Marvel being as big as it is, I still feel like they're the easiest to work with of everybody I've ever worked with. Yeah. They have such good editors, and they are so about you expressing your creativity personally and you know if you guys like these crazy ideas that I come up with thank these Marvel editors because they let me do it yeah you know, they yeah. can so easily shut me down and make me just draw this guy punching that guy or whatever but the fact that they're so down to go with whatever I come up with I've never been told you know you know no outright you know there's always a, if that ever happens there's a real good reason and I get it yeah but uh 99% of the time they're into the and they're, they're all about it. They, they love that cool idea just as much as you and I do. Um, so, in contrast, there are definitely times when you're working with a smaller shop or even one guy, and they're in your, up in your face with notes, and it is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so, I, you know, I've made that point to say, you know, all games, uh, you know, toys, comics, that kind of stuff can vary a lot. Now, what's different about the particular medium. Like with toys, one thing that's been very different is you often have a very limited space to work with, so you often have this very tall vertical shape that appears on the side of a box, you know, and that means you can't have your character posed horizontally, right? You have to have your character posed vertically, which, you know, I've watched those Jim Lee videos about how to make action-packed figures, and the whole, the whole way you do it is you shift them so that they're off balance and they're, they feel like they're in motion, so one of your greatest tools is taken away from you right away. You can't really put your characters in motion. They have to be in a solid standing pose pretty much every time. Um, so I feel like the trick with doing toy design as well, given that, given that 
that's that's something you have to work with. How do you still make it interesting? Or with video games, the they don't all always care about like super finished art. Like if the job is concept or design, that's not what they're worried about. They they have three D artists. They have you know this whole team that's going to execute on your idea. It's more about like what's what's good about the design, right? Um, sometimes it is about that finished illustration. And, you know, uh, I, I don't know, I lost my train of thought there, but the point is that um, you, you don't know when you take on any of these assignments exactly yeah. what it's going to be, and you kind of have to feel it out and, and kind of read through the lines and understand what the client is asking for. And then you'll be successful to the extent that you can understand what they're asking for and then give them that. <laughs> Um, this might be, I, I don't know how difficult this question would be to, to answer because you've done so many remarkable covers, but is there one cover that you did, even if it was in the beginning of your career until now, that when you completed it, you looked at it personally and were like, wow, like, you know what I mean? Like you've done a lot of wow covers, but was there, was there one that you personally like felt was like, uh, uh, you know, I guess your favorite, you know what I mean? Or at least one that. It, it does something for you every time you see it, or maybe it has a memory attached to it to you, you know what I mean? Because you've done so many at this point. It's a great question. You would think so, right? But what I, what I find always happens to me is I'm working on these covers, and it might play out over the course of, like, at fastest, it's a day. Uh -huh. um, but it can be several days that you could be working on these things. And after you've stared at something that long, even if it's just a day, you get to the end and you're kind of like, <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, I'm not so sure, is it working? Mm, not really sure. And I always find that sleeping on it and looking at it the next morning, you know, it can reveal everything to you. Yeah. You, know, you can look at it. If it, I guess, I guess what it is, it's a test. You mm. know, like it's the sleep on it test. And when I when I do that test and I look at it again, I might go, it's great, awesome, we're done here. Or conversely, I might look at it and go. Oh well, that thing screwed up. Let me fix it. You know, so I, I, I when I finish it on a certain night, I, I, I don't really know if it's done until I look at it again. And so the feeling is more. I, I'm not sure. I, 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 I can't love it because I'm not even sure it's done yet. And another weird thing that happens is sometimes I've, you know, I've had that feeling where I thought a cover was really good and I put it out there and. It didn't get the reaction that I wanted. Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, I thought a cover was all right. And then I put it out there. And damn, if it isn't my most popular thing I've ever done. On <laughs> you know? So it, it, it actually matters a lot to me, like how it's received. And, and how I feel about it depends a lot on how it's received. So some covers, you know, maybe I thought it was a minor cover, but then over time it's turned out to be like a really, really important cover. Mm -hmm. And fans will tell me that they love that one and over time I can't help but you know absorb that and start to feel like that is now one of my favorite covers too just because yeah. it worked for whatever reason um, but recently I, I did a Captain America uh, Avengers Max Strike cover so Ooh, it's, okay. it's uh, Captain America posing in front of his giant battle mech yeah, yeah this, this that's fine yet to be released issue of Avengers Max Strike and it's a, it's a ratio variant I think I put that up on Instagram, not necessarily. I do, I do it. I like it. Yeah. Lot. And I put it up on Instagram. I thought it would do fine, but it blew all expectations out of the water. It became far and away my most liked, shared, favorite thing ever I've ever posted. Wow. Uh, so now, I mean, it's now in my head. This is like one of my best images ever. It must be right if people are going to say that. So I guess that's that's how I'm trying to explain to you why why the uh, the opinion yeah. of people matters just as much. As and that's fun. That must have been fun to draw. I, I grew up with, uh, I don't know if you remember, you remember Exo Squad back in the day? Oh, I love that show. Yeah, all the mechs and every, oh, that's so cool, man. Yeah, I, I love that stuff. Um, Francisco, you had a question, right? Uh, yeah. One of my favorite uh, covers that you've done recently is the Carmen one. Uh, how did that one like, come out? I love it so much. That was incredible. Thank you very much. That that one is kind of like what we were talking about before. It's you know you got this character that looks really cool, so you got that going for you. But then also, what can I do to add to it and make it more compelling? So 
there's a sort of secondary layer that happens. Like, you, you see that there's a girl in the rain at yeah. first when you look at this cover, but then when you look a little bit closer, the raindrops are little skulls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's so genius. Thank you. She's, uh, because she's deaf, you know, pretty much. <laughs> I had an alternate one, and a, a little bit sorry we didn't do, but she's sitting at a French cafe sipping a cappuccino, and then if you look closely, the, the design on the on the foam is a skull, so that would have been cool, too. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah this, this one and the, uh, the Psylocke kicked in, those, these two have been my top favorite covers of yours, those are amazing. The Psylocke one's really nice, yeah. Yeah, that, that's just like a lot of love for, for Psylocke finally coming out, I think that's the... So most, I've drawn Psylocke a couple times on covers before, but never as a starring character. So one of the great things yeah. about these color bleed covers, as we've been calling them recently. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask you that. What is the title? The title for that that style of uh, yeah, color bleed? Okay. That's what I've been calling it. So yeah. It, it started off as negative space covers, right? Like you, you've seen those before, where. You know, the background is a color, and then any part of the character that is that color, you don't draw it. Mm -hmm. And you draw everything else. So it started off that way. But the downside of negative space covers is, let's say Cyclops' clothes are yellow. Yeah. And the background is yellow. Well, now Cyclops doesn't have hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's weird. That doesn't quite work as yeah. well as you want it to. So this is my way of having my cake and eating it, too. So, yeah. like, from a distance, you're not seeing like a much contrast between the background and Cyclops' hand, necessarily. But it's there. Like, the hand didn't drop out, so you don't have that weirdness. So you get the best of both worlds, and that's... And so it's different from a negative space cover, and, and I, that's why I feel like calling it its own thing is, is a good idea. So anyway, call it. That's what we came up with. <laughs> Fantastic. Love it. Love it. Um, David, we're about to hit that half-hour mark. I appreciate you so much. We all do. Thank you so much for this. Uh, thank you so much for, for doing our cover. Um, everyone listening, nonstop Spider-Man number one, uh, David Nakayama. Not, he hit a, a, a grand slam with it. Uh, thank you so much, David, for everything. If anyone's interested in the cover, uh, David has a link to it on his and his sites, on his, and his profiles. You could see it in uh, us on metahumanscomics.com. You could find it there or on our social media. Um, you'll find it there. And uh, David, thank you for everything. Um, you're the best, dude. And uh, we'll continue to stay in touch. And maybe in the future, uh, when uh, this pandemic passes over, uh, it would be an honor to have you at one of our uh, conventions. You know what I mean? Uh, years down the line when the world's a better place, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, we can fly you out here and we can make all that happen. Yeah. yeah that sounds amazing. I'm looking forward to that day for sure. Um, just want to say thank you for having me on this cover. It, it turned out fantastic. Uh, the fan reaction has been incredible. It was one of those covers that I put it out there, and the fan, you know, the fan reaction on Instagram was over the top huge. Like, man, you know, just about that same level as that Avengers cover I was telling you about. Um, people, and every time I post it, it's like that. <laughs> yeah. People just like it. So that means uh, I, I don't know how many, uh, how many were printed, but it's going to get. It's going to be shown over and over again on my site because it is, has been a hit every time I post it. Hopefully that drives all the sales, and uh, and that's what I want for you. I want a, a huge sales hit. Yeah, thank you so um, much, David. Yeah, but yeah. thank you for having me. It turned out great, good collaboration, and thanks for having me on your show. And I'm sorry to duck out here, but uh, no. I'll talk to you again soon. All good. It's just we're, we're so uh, blessed to have you here. Thank you so much that you have a wonderful rest of your day. And uh, we will continue to stay in touch. And you're the best, dude. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much. Good night, you guys. All right. Bye -bye. Good night.